the law, for instance, says defilement. Defilement is punishable here in Uganda. We made the law. When we, we came, we were so aggressive. We said defilement, having sex with a girl who is below 18 years, is a defilement and will be punished by death. But how many people have been punished for, for that? And in some of the areas, it is official. 14 years, you are married. I studied law for one year at the University of Dar es Salaam as a subject. And uh, I, I, know what, I know what they were teaching. Uh, there was the case of Amukeyo versus uh, Regina, where Amukeyo stole a cow. This was in Kenya. Stole a cow and slaughtered it and, uh, and, and buried the skin under the, uh, under, under the hut in their house. Now, his wife, of course, knew, knew that uh, Amukai had stolen the cow. Uh, and I don't know what they quarreled about. The wife went to give evidence against Amukai. Then Amukai, I don't know who had told him. He had heard of something called the Indian Evidence Act of 18 something something. And then he said, you people, this, this, this woman is part of me. So he cannot, she cannot give evidence against me. And then the guy said, rubbish. This, this act was not meant for you. It was meant for other people, but not you, you, not, not you Africans. That's when I lost interest in the war. In, in, in the law. <laughs> I said, what sort of nonsense is this? Eh? I, 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 you know, I'm all... So then, I, I know the, the, the legal system has a lot of, uh, the one we have here has a, a lot of those Western things, some of which are good, modern, reformist, equality of people like, for instance, equality between man and woman, and so on. Are, some of them are good, some are not, are not good. They need to be looked at. But all those were principles, as I was saying the other day, among the, the ladies, the, the women uh, judges, that those rights, even in Europe, were espoused at a certain stage on account of the social economic transformation in the society. The European society was like, uh, like what we have been having here. You know, women were n n not uh, respected, a lot of uh, injustice, no, 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 indivi no individual rights, but because of the social economic transformation, society changed. And I, I quoted the example of, if you go to Europe, 1400, Europe had three classes. The feudal class, the peasant class, and the artisan class. That was about 1400. You can go and check this. By the time of the French Revolution, European society, if we take France as an example, had evolved into a four-class society. The feudalists, a new class had emerged, the middle class. In French, it is called the bourgeoisie. A new class, it had never existed in human history. We never had a middle class in the whole human history of man of four and a half million years. This is the first time it will emerge. A middle class, that means, a, a middle class means somebody 
who understood the importance of profit, the difference between the input cost and the final price, and the difference is the profit. And the more profit you get, the better. This was a new, a new development in, in human history. Then with the middle class came another class which never existed before, and these were the working class. The people who had no other thing to sell except their labor. And then you still had the peasants. This was 1789. So really the, 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 the intellectual class, wherever you are in Africa, you, you need to, to, to really watch out, because if, if not, now, if you go to Europe today and you are looking for peasants, they are no longer there. If you say, I'm looking for a peasant, I just want one peasant, you will not get any. Even the feudalists are no longer there, really. So what you have now in Europe is a two-class society, a middle class, different grades of it. There are different grades. If you had read Mao Zedong, he would have helped you to understand the different grades, but people don't want to read Mao Zedong. And the skilled working class. Now, here in Africa, we, the MRM people, have been talking about it. From the very beginning, you are always talking about it. But people don't get it. So you get a situation where a peasant is producing another peasant. Now, in that situation, OK. And this is the dilemma. Because the other day in the women conference, judges conference, I had some of the speakers saying that, oh, you know, there's a problem here. The law, for instance, says defilement. Defilement is punishable here in Uganda. We made the law. When we, we came, we were so aggressive. We said defilement, having sex with a girl who is below 18 years is a defilement and will be punished by death. But how many people have been punished for, for that? And in some of the areas it is official, 14 years, you are married. Up to now. We are talking, preaching, uh, teenage pregnancy, what, what, what? It's now like, uh, but it is going on. Why? Because the society has not changed. We are, we are dealing with the, the top, the superstructure, the roof of the house, without dealing with the foundation. So therefore, that's why for us, we say, you reformers, you freedom fighters of, of justice, you preachers in the church, you uh, social scientists of other types, please understand that social economic transformation is the base of, uh, of, of the journey to, 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 to greater freedoms